Hi, I'm Antonio Sella, and in this video we'll discuss what's a stochastic process in an engineering sense with some examples without being too formal. The motivation of all of this is that in communications and control engineering, noisy signals are of great importance. We need to filter the noise, cancel random vibrations, so the value of a noisy signal at each time instant is a random variable. But okay, there is some kind of relationship between, let's say, the temperature today and temperature one year ago or temperature yesterday. So that kind of relationship is formalized in a stochastic process. In an abstract definition, a stochastic process, this calligraphic X, is a set of random variables that take values in some sample space omega, and that set is somehow ordered or arranged, let's say, because there is an index set, capital T. In other terms, it's a sort of random function from capital T to omega. For instance, we may understand capital T as an interval of time between zero and 24 hours, and the stochastic process can be a temperature reading every minute. So, you know, it's random. I don't know beforehand which will be the temperature in one hour, but okay, you can make an educated guess. But in this case, then, this capital T will be the set of times from zero, one minute up to the last minute of the day. And this omega will be temperature readings real numbers. So this is the abstraction of a noisy signal. I mean, with this index set is time, we understand that as time series, samples of an audio signal, for instance, or of this temperature. But capital T can be something else, we'll see later on. But okay, to summarize this slide, we will define my stochastic process as a set of random variables one variable for each value of the possible index set, being each of those variables belonging to a given sample space. So it's a random function in the sense that, well, maybe today I have this temperature reading, but maybe next week I have this other temperature reading. So at 12.01, temperature is a random variable in here, and there is one random variable for each time instant. So, more examples. Apart from one sample of temperature per hour in one day, or in one week, or whatever, discrete time signal with random noisy measurements of temperatures, we can have noisy continuous time signals. We may understand the temperature to physically exist at every value of t. And for instance, we may have measurements every five hours and we may wish to interpolate. So we have noisy continuous time signals, noisy discrete time signals. We may also measure in, let's say, in a manufacturing process, the temperature of some piece of cast iron at five points. Then we have multivariate random signals. So we have time as our index set and we have samples of five temperatures, R5. But well, you know, we may also think that if we put a clock and the number of sensor, then we get that temperature. So the way in which we arrange the random variables may be not unique. We may also have, let's say, a picture, 2000 by 1000 pixels. So I have 2 million random variables, 2 megapixels. And there is some kind of photographic noise in it. So that's a stochastic process in which the index variable is bidimensional and it has a spatial meaning, not temporal, it's not a time series. And if we think of a video recording in which I take this 2 megapixels frame 20 times per second, then my index set is a three-dimensional index set, discrete in this case, and I have one temporal dimension number of frame, 
and two spatial dimensions, vertical and horizontal pixels, and then the color, maybe a real number or you know, or three real numbers, if I take red, green and blue pixels, and there may be correlation between the noise at adjacent pixels or an adjacent instant or both. And last, we may have an airplane wing excited by turbulence, so they, there are vibrations, flutter, and these random vibrations is a random function of both length and time. So these are examples of noisy signals in audio, video, structures, multivariate control that we need to formally analyze in a statistical way. These are the stochastic processes. So which are the objectives of all this? We have kind of two extreme cases. One could be total randomness, so that knowing the value of one variable at some instant or pixel or whatever is useless to predict the value at any other instant or pixel. That's white noise. The variable at t1 and that at t2 are statistically independent if they are referred to different instants or pixels. Then, in this case, the arranging of this set of random variables is useless. The other extreme would be total determinism, in which you know I know that my random function is not random, it's sinus of t. Well, then also it's nonsense using any kind of statistics. You know, it, I know it's sinus of t. I can take its third derivative or whatever. But the interest is, of course, in the middle thing. I may have measurements of temperature every five hours and I may be able to estimate that the temperature in between will be, well, I may have some confidence intervals, but if I am close to this point and I know the temperature is smooth, then the temperature in one minute will be very close to the one here. So, you know, I can make some predictions with some confidence intervals and things like that. So the abstract objective is, of course, understanding the relationships between the variables at different values of the index variable, different times, different pixels, understanding those relationships in terms of yeah, covariance, uh, statistical dependence or independence, and things like that. What for? Well, I might wish to do signal smoothing, signal filtering, removing noise from recordings in process control, audio, video applications. Maybe I wish to predict which will be the temperature tomorrow, you know, weather forecast. I may wish to interpolate, just like here, saying that, okay, it's 99% likely that my temperature reading here is between a given set of values. And last, I may wish to do some statistics-based control, in the sense that if there exists some deterministic, because I decide what to do with them, manipulated inputs that change means, variances, correlations, or whatever, then I might use them to fulfill some goals. If I have a random temperature, but moving some steam valve, I can increase its mean, well, then I can use that to achieve, of course, not perfect control, because the temperature will be fluctuating, but at least the mean can be moved to a given point. So that is the motivation of statistics-based control. How can we study those stochastic processes? Well, if they are random functions, they will have a mean which depends on time. This prediction or whatever may have a mean which is a function of time. They may have a variance or standard deviation with it, which is also a function of time. So I can graft some confidence intervals and we may have a covariance between the variables at instant t1 and t2 is kind of a mean for each time instant or for each pixel or whatever, a variance for each pixel 
and the covariance between the image noise in pixel, which whatever coordinates another pixel. Remember T1 and T2. Also, we can at first glance think of them as time in time series. They can just be particular pixels, 2D or 3D things in video, whatever. The things that we define these things and we can compute them maybe from samples, from data. I can take 100 pictures with my camera and extract information about these noises. And these phases are called identification, tuning or learning, depending on what you're doing or which book you're reading. And once I have mean, variance, covariance, correlation and the like, I can use them to predict some variables. With these pink measurements, I can predict that my future temperatures may be in this range here. So this is kind of descriptive framework, computing correlations from data and using them to make predictions. And we have another alternative, which is a physics-based framework, in the sense that if I am studying the vibrations of an airplane wing subject to random inputs, maybe I have a differential equation or a partial differential equation with random inputs. So in discrete time, I may have some state space, some discrete time dynamical system whose input is some noise, usually white noise. Or in continuous time, the transformation of this expression, which is the deterministic ordinary differential equation in state space form, when input u instead of being deterministic is some random, then with some you know theorems, definitions, assumptions, blah blah blah, we get what it's called an stochastic ordinary differential equation, or PDE if we are doing with you know vibrations in beams or whatever. I would study in this way, for instance, the vibrations of the wing of an airplane or the vibrations of a car in a randomly bumpy road or the random noise captured by an antenna which is resonant at given frequencies. So, you know, I can get these covariances and means and stuff like that from data or from physical models. In both cases, of course, the goal is the same, making some predictions, some smoothing, filtering, interpolation or control. And in fact, there is an alternative physics-based framework for stochastic process, which is called the Fokker-Planck equations, in which they are kind of diffusion, partial differential equations to model the diffusion of the probability mass. Diffusion of the probability mass gives a different set of uh, in this case, partial differential equations, modeling these stochastic processes. Of course, details are not the objective here. As a last example, we may have a discharge of a capacitor in which if I repeat the experiment, let's 1000 times, I can compute the mean, I can compute the standard deviation and some confidence intervals. And of course, each discharge of the capacitor subject to random noise interferences will be this kind of jaggy black line, but 100 of them would give me information on this mean and standard deviation and confidence intervals and correlations and the like. That would be one way of analyzing this, gathering 100 repetitions of the experiment, and the other way would be writing the differential equations of the electrical circuit assuming certain characteristics of the exciting electromagnetic noise and solving those differential equations, those stochastic differential equations. We would end up with roughly the same stuff. So let us conclude. The concepts of uh, measurement noise, process noise, flutter in vibrations or noise in audio video in a film, well, they are formalized at stochastic processes random functions, I have an index set, time, space, or whatever, and I have a random variable for each of the index set elements. The practical utility is being able to compute mean variances and correlations between things at different indices in order to make 
predictions, denoising, interpolation, and control. And last, computations may be made based on data via identification, learning, or things like that, or based on models of some differential equations or partial differential equations based in physical insight. All of this constitutes the framework of the stochastic processes, which, of course, mathematicians have suitably defined since the early 20th century. So this is it. We conclude here the video. Thanks for watching.